Hi everyone, thanks for clicking. Hope you're staying safe out there. As more and more people are getting back on the roads now that COVID is ramping down, at least here in Canada, our exposures will be from more than just our household environments. These sources are from things you wouldn't even think about, and they are moving. I'm talking about car radar. Just like what the police used to catch you when you're speeding, but present on almost all modern vehicles. For example, Tesla uses the ARS 40821 sensor, for which the measuring procedure is the rugged ARS 401. 4821 sensor from Continental measures independently the distance and velocity, Doppler's principle, to objects without reflectors in one measuring cycle of FMCW, which is frequency modulated continuous wave, for, with very fast ramps with a real time scanning of 17 times per second. A special feature of the device is the simultaneous measurement of great distances up to 250 meters, relative velocity, and the angle relation between two objects. So, uh, Tesla's forward radar within is within the 76 to 77 gigahertz uh, frequency band, and it is good for up to 525 to 558 feet, or 160 to 170 meters. Uh, the transmission capacity for average for peak is a less than 14.1 dBm at 77 gigahertz, and less than 35.1 dBm with sweep bandwidth of 500 megahertz. The ARS-4B I found for the FCC's power limit settings were set from the frequencies from 1.5 to 100 gigahertz at one milliwatt per centimeter squared. So um, our devices measure in microwatts per meter, meter squared and that is one million microwatts per meter squared. Now, car radar is primarily used um, between the 24 and the 77 gigahertz, usually in the 77 gigahertz, so 76 to 81 gigahertz range. The EIRP, or Effective Isotropic Radiated Power, is now allowed to be 55 dBm. That's 316 watts of peak power. Um, I will put the link right on that below. Uh, fortunately, these frequencies don't really penetrate cars or, and windows, but the pedestrians outside and everything outside are being irradiated with high levels. Uh, now, the 5G frequencies that are being they're going to be in use that are in the higher frequency range are 26, 28, and 39 gigahertz. Um, for Canada and North America. The health concerns I found on the HPS Specialists in Radiation Protection site, uh, I'll link that below, uh, they, someone asked a question. That question is, are there radio frequency RF safety concerns associated with radar units in assisted driving or self-driving vehicles? The expert answered back, Automobile radar used to measure the distance and speed ob of objects in front of the vehicle typically operates at 77 gigahertz in the millimeter wave band. In view of the low power level of, of automobile radiation and the shallow penetration depth of the energy into the body, less than one millimeter, it seems unlikely that these limits could pose a health risk. As with other devices that transmit RF energy in the United States, automobile radar must comply with the RF exposure limits for the US Federal Communications Commission, FCC. Other countries have similar regulations, the FCC power limit of 10 watts per square meter measured at a distance of 20 centimeters. Also, because the transmitted power levels are so low, it is hard to imagine how the cumulative exposure from radar sets in a number of automobiles in the same vicinity would uh, approach or exceed the FCC limits. While there has been little research on possible health risks of millimeter waves, health agencies have not expressed concern about the possible health risks at exposure levels far below major international standards, which are generally similar to that of the FCC. So they expect to be below the FCC standard limits? Cannot imagine it being over? They didn't do any infield testing, is what they're saying? Yes? Um, based on the current safety limits that were set based on not much research based on the uh, current health effects of millimeter waves on, on humans? There isn't much research? Really? Okay. Uh, so let's just see what some of the current research states. A paper entitled 5G Wireless Communication and Health Effects, a Pragmatic Review Based on the Available Studies Regarding 6 to 100 Gigahertz by Myrtle Simcoe and Mats Olaf Matson. Uh, the introduction of the fifth generation of wireless communication will increase the number of high frequency powered base stations and other devices. Mm -hmm. The question is if such higher frequencies in this review, 6 to 100 gigahertz, uh, millimeter waves can have a health impact. 
This review analyzed 94 relevant publications performing in vivo and in vitro investigations, and each of the studies was characterized by study types, so in vivo, in vitro, biological materials like species and cell types, uh, biological endpoint, exposure, so frequency, exposure duration, and power density, results, and certain quality criteria. 80% of the in vivo studies showed responses to exposure, while 58 of the in vitro studies demonstrated effects. The responses affected an all biological endpoints study. There were no consistent relationships found between power density, exposure duration, or frequency, and exposure effects. So therefore, they found that the available studies do not provide adequate or sufficient information for a meaningful safety assessment, or for the question about non-thermal effects. Uh, there is a need for research regarding the impact of heat developments on small surfaces, e.g. skin or the eye, and on any environmental impact. Uh, or their, their quality analysis shows that future studies would, would be useful for safety assessment, design and implementation need to be significantly improved. So what they're saying is that, one, uh, the FCC doesn't have enough information to set safety limits and that this particular paper determined that the uh, design and implementation of current studies needs to be altered. So, this in combination with the uh, millimeter wave 5G bands is concerning. Car radar in combination with the millimeter wave 5G bands is concerning. And proper long-term multiple source biological testing is essential. Uh, so someone did a study on 60 gigahertz millimeter wave, actually it was 60.4 gigahertz, and found that there was no statistically relevant effects uh, this paper was called The Effect of Acute Millimeter Wave Exposure on Dopamine Metabolism of NGF-Treated PC12 Cells uh, by Alexis J. Haas et al. Uh, but in a previous video that I will cite below, we discussed that 60 gigahertz and how it is blocked by O2, so it's not likely not going to be used for radar technologies. So as you can see, frequencies in use from radar and 5G don't really have a lot of overlap, as they cannot because they would interfere with one another. But these are still quite, the, the, the frequencies are still quite high. The power levels will also likely be much larger coming from cars uh, than 5G network out in the country, but in the city, who can say? Uh, the, I have posted the FCC report links below for you to peruse at your own leisure, uh, but as you can bet from other FCC discussions, we have completed, again posted below, the current safety levels are not set to cover the non-thermal effects and their health concerns. So uh, thank you for clicking. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, feel free to like us, leave some comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. And please stay safe out there. Take care.